afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be part of this event. And uh, I'm also uh, very happy to have uh, seen such uh, language versatility, uh, which of course uh, makes it uh, so much uh, easier to, for me to present. Um, and uh, I'm happy to observe the versatility of the language also because I'm going to talk about uh, versatility to enable machine-to-machine uh, -machine, uh, applications and make them more robust based on the versatility provided uh, by uh, the local cloud um, implementation. Uh, and this work that I'm going to present is um, has, it's still work in progress. It's uh, part of a European funded uh, work and it's uh, the efforts of an international consortium uh, which is uh, still uh, active uh, to uh, create the final uh, prototype implementation for this uh, local cloud supporting machine-to-machine -machine applications. Um, okay. The outline of the presentation, uh, I will uh, briefly say something about the background, motivation, and the scenario that we consider, the concepts, uh, we'll discuss a little bit the architecture and uh, show you how we managed to uh, implement initially uh, this uh, architecture and this uh, platform. And finally, I will conclude. Uh, so uh, we were motivated by the fact that uh, today uh, we have, of course, machine-to-machine uh, -machine applications and we have machine-to-machine -machine communications, but uh, the way they are operating is uh, uh, in, uh, and they are implemented uh, in a vertical approach, which means that uh, we will have uh, remote uh, storage of uh, data related to the machine-to-machine -machine applications even when we can have uh, common context, uh, for example, if we have uh, measurements of temperature, we can have applications uh, that uh, are part of the uh, smart home environment. We can also have applications that uh, directly relate uh, to uh, activation of some uh, renewable energy uh, production, like solar energy, or we can have uh, temperature as an important information related to the handling and uh, invoking of e-health related services. For example, if a patient needs to keep uh, temperature at certain degrees because of heart condition, blood pressure, or whatever other reasons. Um, and uh, this uh, makes the application uh, less efficient uh, to use. It uh, creates a little bit uh, bulkiness and uh, also it allows for security breaches, less dependability, since every time we will need uh, to have information about uh, um, a certain application uh, and application we will need to access a remote server and uh, we will um, lose uh, some uh, valuable time and uh, probably will also not be able to utilize fully uh, the benefits of uh, data fusion uh, and uh, rich data fusion that uh, we can uh, have over integrated data which is uh, also due to this uh, remote storage. So what we uh, propose to do is um, build, uh, create a platform uh, that uh, is uh, uh, basically built on top of, uh, of a number of gateways which are crucial to uh, this uh, uh, sensor uh, accessing uh, the larger internet and of course enabling the applications. And this uh, uh, group uh, of gateways, they are grouped into a local cloud which allows that we store everything much closer uh, to, to the application and we have a very common point of access of data, ability to integrate uh, context uh, uh, similar data and so on. And so this is uh, what uh, this project is about. We try to build an environment that actually uh, hides the ter uh, heterogeneity of the different physical things and uh, exposes them as a service to the upper layers. And here, uh, the key point of entry is, uh, as I said, the gateway. Uh, this is uh, the point where the platform can be accessed, and uh, each of these gateways, uh, of course, we see the gateway as a physical device. This can be a setup box, it can be a router, but essentially, it, it will be one physical device, but it can implement several logical functionalities that would also enable a little bit of virtualization when we require such virtualization for in increased uh, uh, capabilities, storage capabilities, resource capabilities, security capabilities, and so on. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, what this concept is about. And what does this change uh, in the scenario that I showed initially? 
uh, basically it allows us to go from a vertical to a horizontal approach of um, uh, creating uh, um, M2M applications and it uh, creates this uh, uh, very common point uh, where we can uh, use uh, data that's related to a number of applications, the same data. We don't have to try to uh, generate this uh, data every time an application requires, requires it. Uh, obviously, in a commercial deployment, we will still need to have a remote server for some kind of uh, long-term uh, functions and, uh, uh, and actions, and that's why we have uh, here also uh, considered that, and uh, this is also what you observe in the scenario. But uh, in any case, now uh, with this horizontal approach, uh, we, will, we are also able to um, create the context awareness uh, that uh, is very important when enabling uh, smart infrastructure applications uh, brought to us by uh, M2M communications. Uh, the platform that I'm talking about, as I said, the gateway is a key point. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we have um, uh, selected uh, to have uh, both a centralized and distributed uh, platform uh, implementation, although here I have shown distributed platform, but for certain handlings it's important to have the possibility for a centralized action. And uh, we have uh, this uh, platform uh, functioning as a buffer to hide the heterogeneity of the physical things and uh, to uh, enable adaptation uh, at the gateway level, which uh, of course uh, can invoke services that are related to a particular need that has arisen. So we uh, basically enable a number of services, uh, basic services that are part of the platform, also extended services that will be uh, provided by uh, third parties, and uh, on-the-fly services, when the need arises, we can have a set of basic services uh, uh, be integrated uh, by, within the platform and uh, enable this uh, particular uh, application that, uh, uh, that is, uh, has come forward uh, as a demand. So the gateway here is the bridge, the connectivity bridge to different logical functionalities. Uh, and uh, it, uh, this um, gateway as a physical and logical device uh, allows uh, this um, uh, connectivity to the rest of the architecture and also to the upper layers and uh, also uh, to uh, enable uh, larger storage and processing activities. So basically we uh, call uh, this um, functionality of the gateway things as a service. This is uh, the key uh, uh, we call it uh, things as a service instance that is a uh, key functionality of, uh, of uh, the BETAS uh, gateway. So here is an example of uh, uh, basic services. We can have, um, for example, measurement uh, by sensors uh, of uh, humidity and temperature. And uh, what you see here on top is, um, this is uh, the physical device, uh, the physical gateway. Uh, it will implement adaptation functionalities, the things as a service functionalities, and of course the service functionalities. And as demanded uh, by uh, the end, uh, uh, the end uh, user, which in this case will be uh, a private uh, profile of uh, this user, uh, we can uh, uh, enable uh, the information uh, that is needed. Uh, so. Um, we can have uh, also uh, a similar example related uh, to uh, extended services that are provided by third parties. And we can think of an application that is, for example, uh, related to uh, parking or paying the uh, parking meter. And uh, naturally, we'll need to have a third party that will uh, provide this uh, particular payment functionality. But still, we can uh, have a number of uh, um, information that is uh, enabled uh, at uh, the gateway level and uh, that would uh, be required for uh, handling a particular uh, user's profile in this particular case. Uh, so uh, we have built uh, uh, these uh, things as a service reference architecture in a layered approach. We have uh, three main layers, as you can see that uh, interacts with uh, uniquely designed uh, uh, application uh, program interfaces. We have the physical layer that, uh, uh, of course, uh, helps all the physical things or devices. And uh, this physical layer uh, interacts with the things as a service layer or the logical layer, 
which actually represents these uh, physical things as uh, simple entities uh, by means of uh, adaptation uh, API. Um, and then we have uh, another application API that would enable uh, the connection uh, to the application layer that is not uh, shown in this uh, particular uh, diagram, but uh, it uh, runs on top of uh, the Betas instance that is um, the part uh, in, um, uh, in the black uh, uh, rectangle. The things as a service, uh, as you see, we have uh, in the beta systems, we have several gateways and so we can have several adaptation um, instances uh, uh, in a beta instance, but we will have only one single uh, distributed things as a service instance. And uh, this is uh, um, shown in this figure with uh, the green color. And um, we can uh, have uh, interaction between these different uh, gateways. Uh, we have adopted also a modular approach so we can easily add more components to this uh, or modules uh, to this architecture or we can also um, not use all available components depending on what is the particular scenario. Uh, so uh, we need also a particular ontology approach in order to, uh, in order to handle uh, this um, uh, data and uh, uh, the various uh, uh, applications and uh, services required and uh, enable also the adaptation. And the ontology that was chosen was uh, partially designed based on existing ontologies uh, and uh, uh, partially it was specifically designed to serve our purposes. So we have uh, realized uh, a semantic parser that uh, can help us analyze the data received from things. And then we uh, want also to map these contents uh, in a context aware fashion of the different things. For example, we will have um, the name uh, of a thing uh, and this will be a service that would describe the type of thing, its location, and when the location of the things changes, then we can uh, it also it changes the associated with this thing service. Um, we use also semantic rules to decide how and when uh, to combine uh, things services. Um, but here I have to say that uh, still uh, this um, uh, semantic framework is a little bit uh, weak and it cannot uh, still cover all possible scenarios that might arise and uh, this is uh, a weakness that I admit and we observed also in the initial um, demonstration and uh, after we implemented uh, uh, the first part of uh, uh, the simplest uh, part to prove and verify how this platform works. So this is still something that uh, we are trying to work on and to handle, but uh, for now we are unable to cover all possible scenarios that may arise. Uh, how does the application support uh, happen? Um, we can have uh, applications running uh, outside of the platform or uh, applications that run inside uh, of the platform. So basically in the outside case, we will have a smartphone or other device that is external to the platform that will be uh, the application client or application server and it will communicate with the physical gateway and uh, the logical functionalities implemented uh, there uh, depending on the type of service. In a similar way is of course uh, the case when we have application client and server within uh, the platform and uh, this is uh, basically related to the operation and support of uh, the basic services and here we will have a private user profile uh, for example in a home automation scenario or a similar scenario in the um, previous case uh, this is when we have uh, an external device that uh, uh, serves as the application uh, server, then we will have uh, uh, a user with a public profile. We can have also a combined um, operation, so parts of uh, the application client can be uh, within uh, the platform and the server outside or vice versa, but uh, this is uh, depending on uh, what the need is. Uh, we have built uh, the functionalities on uh, 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 based on four layers, so we have physical adaptation, things as a service and service layer. And as you see, we have a uh, number of functionalities that are important to implement, uh, none the least of which is uh, the proper discovery of the things and uh, the proper uh, lookup uh, for the services that are needed since instead of uh, being stored uh, on a, uh, or run on an end device, now we have everything 
uh, in this uh, local cloud. And uh, uh, we have uh, specific functionalities that relate uh, to operation of uh, a particular layer, as you see it here, but we also have uh, common, uh, so these are specific like services and application management relates to the proper operation of the service uh, layer. Resource and management, uh, um, resource management and discovery is uh, very much uh, related to the things as a service layer, but we will have also um, functionalities like uh, quality of service management, uh, security management, uh, context management, and big data management that will uh, relate to the operation of all layers. Uh, so here I want to say that also a lot of uh, the, the big data management uh, as a functionality exists uh, in uh, the things as a service layer because uh, with a lot of information it is uh, um, very useful first to try to handle this uh, uh, at a local level uh, and obviously, uh, if we require more resources, we will need to enable this through the logical possibilities uh, by having more gateways uh, and instances uh, communicate and interact with each other, which can enable the uh, required uh, virtual resources. And uh, for implementation purposes, we have uh, uh, implemented uh, or um, used uh, Xen uh, supervisor to um, to create uh, these additional um, uh, virtualization resources when we need them. Uh, so also we, of course, have dependability in this layer. Uh, so uh, this is how uh, we will have in a better uh, uh, instances uh, interact. Uh, we, uh, as I said, apply a centralized or distributed approach and uh, depending on what is needed. In this case, we have uh, service, um, at service level, we have a uh, centralized approach and uh, here the central node uh, will, um, gateway will act as a coordinator of uh, the service capabilities. Whereas uh, at uh, things as a service layer uh, level, we will have, uh, I'm sorry, this is a bit distorted, this figure, but I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, anyway, here we will have a pure distributed uh, operation and uh, each of these uh, routers will interact uh, with uh, one another to uh, synchronize resources uh, and the actions that need to be taken. So when we have a distributed approach, we will have um, a start topology that we have adopted, so which is uh, not very clearly described here, but uh, this is uh, how uh, in the case of more such uh, entities involved, uh, this is uh, the topology that uh, you will be able to observe. Um, the perspective architecture, high-level architecture of this uh, gateway functionality is uh, as, you, as you see it here. So we have again very um, specific uh, to the particular uh, manager related uh, uh, services but uh, functionalities, but we will also have some that will uh, be affecting and uh, relating to all layers. And uh, so uh, we will see that in the core of this uh, um, architecture, we have uh, the things as a service resource manager, and uh, it would uh, interact uh, uh, with uh, the things adapter, which is another core functionality. And uh, uh, we can invoke uh, whenever necessary uh, the action of security manager that would uh, certify, uh, that would uh, handle the uh, trust um, uh, actions or uh, authentication actions and uh, basically check identity of the, of the things or the devices, uh, the verification of uh, the certification keys and so on. And uh, in a similar way, the context uh, manager will be um, related uh, to uh, activities uh, and tasks of the uh, resources manager, but also it will be uh, very necessary at uh, adaptation layer what, where we can identify what services will be needed uh, for uh, the discovered things. Um, how do uh, instances interact? Uh, so uh, we will uh, require, of course, uh, uh, registration uh, first uh, and uh, identification of the uh, capabilities of a particular instance. And then we will need to synchronize uh, these available capabilities. Uh, and uh, once uh, this uh, has uh, been accomplished uh, and information exchanged, then we have established uh, the uh, communication. This is uh, uh, very quickly uh, said, but of course there are a number of um, uh, communication uh, that uh, takes place and uh, uh, answers that uh, have to be uh, received uh, with confirmations in order to enable the proper interaction and communication between uh, 
uh, gateway instances. So, as I said, we uh, have a modular solution for the implementation and so we have developed each of these uh, platform components uh, separately. Um, the, the major uh, environments for, uh, for the platform, this is uh, the OSGI or we have also adopted the distributed OSGI. And we have uh, for the communication between the physical devices or the sensors, uh, uh, Zigbee communication that was incorporated in the um, implementation. Uh, we have, uh, we refer to these many different reusable components of the platform as bundles and uh, they are able to hide implementations from the other components while communicating from the services. This is what we wanted to show. We wanted to show how uh, instances can uh, interact, uh, how things can be discovered, uh, in a way how resources can be enabled. Uh, and to an extent also uh, we are working also currently on um, demonstrating uh, service level agreements uh, related to the quality of service negotiation. Um, the betas uh, uh, components, they are, as I said, plug-in components, uh, which uh, gives uh, flexibility and scalability to the implementation and to the whole platform. And of course this is key, especially uh, when we talk about machine-to-machine uh, -machine, um, environments. Uh, the first simple implementation, it considered two gateways uh, that were installed separately in a house with two floors. This is uh, in a way the um, implementation. So we, we have two laptops uh, that uh, uh, act as the gateways. We have a switch that would uh, enable uh, net hoc network operation and uh, we have a coordinator uh, this is, uh, that's connected uh, to the uh, laptop by means of a USB. Uh, then we have, uh, as I said, the Zigbee communication uh, between uh, the devices, the end devices, and we use an Arduino um, electronic uh, environment, uh, since this is uh, open stack uh, environment, uh, to enable uh, this uh, uh, signal between uh, the present sensors, which are infrared sensors, and uh, uh, then, for example, if we have uh, uh, this Arduino board, it reads the digital uh, uh, pin signal uh, from the infrared sensors and then uh, activates a certain action. So in a um, more um, electronic uh, visualized uh, setup, this is uh, how this implementation <laughs> setup looked like. So we had the laptop and uh, the Zigbee coordinator and uh, this is uh, the Arduino board that you see here. So as I said, we, we had two gateways and we considered that uh, one gateway was particularly uh, the, uh, the Betas gateway and the other gateway was um, uh, just a, a gateway. Uh, we have uh, the Betas gateway associated with uh, one of the floors and the other gateway with another floor. And we demonstrated with an intrusion detection application, which was not specifically designed uh, for this um, uh, particular demonstration, but uh, it, uh, uh, it, was, it used uh, Tomcat application to, uh, for the location detection. And of course, uh, we uh, have these presence sensors that uh, uh, detected the presence. And um, uh, so, uh, Let's see, uh, yes, so this uh, uh, application, uh, the Apache Tomcat, once uh, it is uh, uh, installed, uh, then it exploits its distributed OSGI uh, capabilities and uh, requests uh, the installation uh, on the platform, so it's very easy to, to manage. And uh, we could demonstrate uh, this access, uh, simultaneous access, and also the coordination so that uh, we will not have overlap between uh, gateway, uh, gateway access requests. And uh, we would be able to uh, uh, have um, you know, the resources uh, synchronized accordingly and uh, uh, correspondingly the resources managed. And uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, in a simple way, how we could uh, also observe that our uh, semantic uh, ontology framework uh, uh, was uh, not strong enough uh, and uh, could not cover all uh, possible scenarios that, uh, that could arise. Uh, so this is something we continue to work on. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, and uh, to conclude, as I said, this is still a work in progress and uh, uh, you are very welcome to visit the website where you can 
uh, follow the progress or have a more detailed look into some of the um, published reports and presentations. Uh, but um, what we could prove is uh, that uh, we, uh, the uh, uh, combined centralized and distributed approach uh, is, um, uh, is the way to go. And uh, it was this uh, particular design of the architecture was very useful for implementing the different components, even when we used the OSGI environment. Uh, we have uh, flexibility that comes from this uh, layer approach and uh, we can uh, also support uh, a variety of uh, M2M um, standardized uh, or in standardization uh, process networks, uh, frameworks. Uh, also, uh, as I said, we can use uh, star topology or we can also use a peer-to-peer -peer approach and um, this uh, also increases uh, reliability and performance and uh, gives a certain degree of flexibility. Uh, and uh, we plan to, of course, uh, enhance uh, these functionalities and uh, optimize uh, some uh, of um, uh, the algorithms and uh, processes that we run on this platform. And uh, as I said, uh, weakness still is related to the semantic model, uh, which uh, is also a work in progress at the moment. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, all uh, the uh, people who uh, work on the project. And uh, this is, uh, of course, a joint work. So um, uh, these are some of our partners, uh, the rest of them. And so we have uh, um, not so many partners, but I think we're doing a good job. Uh, this is the end of my presentation, and I want to use the opportunity to uh, also disseminate uh, an event, uh, the Wireless Telecommunication Symposium, sponsored by the IEEE, which is next year in, in New York City, and of which I'm the program co-chair, so uh, I hope you will be interested uh, to submit and uh, come uh, to this event, uh, which is uh, a good event, and we have planned uh, also many interesting social activities. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And we, I, is it okay for some questions? Of course. Uh -huh. Yes, please. Uh, thank you for the very well uh, presented topic first. Uh, I have uh, questions in regard to interoperability. Uh, you said that the semantic model has not been fully defined yet. Uh, what's your approach in order to define the data such that you have a universal semantic model that you can achieve the interoperability? Because I think that's one of the major tasks that you would have to do in order to make this world uh, yes. work in a, in a real scalable uh, solution, correct? Uh, that's correct. Uh, actually, it's not that it's not been defined, but it's defined in such a way that <coughs> it doesn't cover all possible application scenarios that might arise, and this is a weakness of it. So we have used, uh, as I said, we de de uh, designed uh, particularly for the purpose uh, um, uh, some uh, ontology, but we also used a lot of existing semantic ontology, and I think uh, the way to go uh, now from, from here is uh, to uh, optimize further and maybe create more um, we don't want to have a very specifically created ontology because at the end we uh, want to have uh, more of a, a versatile also a platform that uh, will not be so dependent on a specifically designed for the purpose ontology. And so we want to uh, continue to, to see whether we can have optimization somewhere else that would allow us to have a larger versatility of uh, the ontology, uh, the semantic ontology framework. But uh, I'm not directly involved in the semantic ontology development, so I, I don't know. Um, this is the general approach that I'm aware of that uh, they have adopted uh, to continue. So this is what I can tell you. But you're going to work on that as well, right? Yeah, yeah. The, yes. I mean, this is part of uh, the planned work uh, 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 and steps forward. As I said, this is work in progress. And uh, the project is only a, a year and a half now in. So we still have a year and a half to go. And uh, this is uh, what the next step is at the moment. Okay. Uh, similar to the security, actually. So. We are aware that um, uh, we need to have, especially at communication level, probably uh, especially with the uh, bidirectional communication between the devices, this uh, security is very important as well uh, to be properly addressed. Uh, but for, for the time being, we are using, uh, as I said, for the demonstration, the ZigBee, 
which so it uh, standardizes uh, some approaches. But we also plan to exploit this a little bit further to see what optimizations and elsewhere also uh, probably also at adaptation level can allow us to uh, to strengthen uh, this particular part. And this is the general approach that's been adopted. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have two questions. Two questions. One is, uh, you know, it's fine that you can. Uh, well, probably I also didn't understand everything, but that you can uh, that you can uh, discover things on the web and um, so on. Uh, I think in normal case you have to know, um, you know, the ownership and access rights. Who is able to to see what? Because probably. It wouldn't be good if I can discover who is in entering your home. <laughs> uh, the second question is, mm, because we are um, now playing some projects mm. in the area of medical devices, and there one of the problems is that if you go on the level of individual sensors, you know, wearable and implantable, they are very small and normally even even cryptography is a problematic thing, mm -hmm. what we would like, but it's difficult. So the question is, uh, how heavy is the application that is on on the device? Because it looks, you know, fine with some stacks. I was also not sure what is really where, what is on a big server, was on the small device. But okay. if it is very general and if it is applicable really mm -hmm. for, for very small things. Okay, so the first question related uh, to the security. Um, as I said, we have a security uh, framework that's uh, implemented. We have a security manager, and it interacts with uh, management functionalities that relate to trust and trust uh, calculation, uh, to um, authentication, to authorization, and uh, also to the general uh, security uh, actions that uh, related also to the communication uh, part. And uh, this is for now what the framework is. Uh, as I said, we uh, we have this framework so that we will be able, and there we, uh, the security management will, uh, manager will take care of checking uh, the identity. There will be implemented some identity management mechanisms, but not necessarily something that's specifically designed for the purpose, but already what has been proposed in the world. Also, we use um, certification keys, so this, in a way, can be a little bit, uh, obviously, uh, they, we, we opt for lightweight solutions related to this, but uh, uh, we, there is still some optimization needed in that respect. Uh, so this is uh, the security framework for the moment. It's a little bit still at high level, uh, but some work is, in, is planned to, uh, to have more optimizations and to, to make it more foolproof, and I fully agree. I mean, especially uh, nowadays, we don't want uh, to have, I mean, it's not so important whether my neighbor knows that my fridge is empty or that I haven't cleaned it for a long time or how much coffee I drink, but when it comes to critical applications like uh, uh, medical, uh, remote uh, healthcare and so on, I think that uh, this, is, uh, this is very important. Uh, the other question, um, so most of these functionalities uh, and uh, these uh, um, things as a service in particular functionalities uh, they relate to a gateway implementation. So we have a physical uh, setup box or a router, and uh, this is where this is implemented. Depending on the uh, resources, the physical resources of the device and capabilities. So it can be uh, having uh, more logical functionalities or less logical functionalities. But this is where the major weight of the platform at the moment is. It's not the sensors are just sensors, so we have used existing sensors. And uh, of course, the end devices are and like can be a smartphone, whatever. So this is also not something that's uh, really affected. Uh, but uh, I, I agree that uh, this is uh, something that's important as well. Uh, but it's not the focus of, of this work here. So we, we do not uh, burden the sensors. An approach to this is my personal interest and what's something I've been thinking of, of making sensors uh, more. Um, intelligent devices 
will be probably to uh, use this uh, technology um, based on um, uh, optical communication or uh, exchanging this electronic, electronic communication uh, components in the integrated circuit with optical communications based on, for example, light emitting diode uh, technology, which is still something that has not been achieved. And this would uh, enable the processing uh, to release more processing power uh, so that we will be able to probably implement more adaptation uh, mechanisms and uh, other uh, intelligent uh, algorithms that will make the whole sensor device more intelligent so we don't have to worry so much about weighing down uh, the device uh, when we uh, have uh, some very fancy cryptographic algorithm or something else. But this is really for the future because this is still some uh, technology that's uh, not uh, come at all into even prototype version <laughs> uh, still in, uh, in uh, but I'm willing to exploit this personally. I have recently become interested, so 